What's up guys? Welcome to 2021. I'm excited to talk about the second new comic book day of the year, but first I need you to like and subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media if you're watching there. This is going to be a fun week because I actually have not got to read any of the uh, first week of Future State stuff. Um, so while I'm going to be talking about Future State, I guess it kind of is going to depend on how much I like what I've read in the first week so far. Um, and so to recap that, I kind of want to say um, I'm going to read Generation Shattered because this is going to explain how the new, like, continuity or lack thereof works um the flash is a character that i really enjoyed williamson's run on so i'm gonna go ahead and grab the future state flash and see if that's more interesting than what happened to it after he left and then swamp thing has uh really caught my attention as a character um i've been reading the alan moore stuff and so that's kind of put me into this like swamp thing deep dive and so I'm going to go ahead and check out the future state for that as well because um, it's a cool character and I hope they do something interesting with it. Um, I'm really interested in what they're going to do with Swamp Thing in March for, uh, I believe it's Ram V that's writing that one. Um, the cover we've seen so far is pretty impressive. And so as much as I want to read that, I kind of suspect there's going to be some connections to the future state thing. And uh, we might even get the introduction introduction of the new um avatar for swamp thing i guess so um yeah those are the ones i'm gonna be checking out hopefully i can read those in the next coming days but of course let's focus on what's coming out for new comic book day january the 13th of 2021 i'm gonna start with all of the um future state stuff if you don't know dc is doing this thing where for uh, January and February they're putting pretty much all of their other books on hold and they're doing uh, one to two issue runs of a couple different characters in this um, future state thing which is supposed to be like the next generation of characters mm -hmm. so I'm excited to check that out and see what uh, what it's all about but for week two the ones that have my attention before I read anything of course is uh, Dark Detective, Green Lantern, Justice League, Robin Eternal, and Teen Titans. And I've heard some pretty like decent things about all of the Batman family stuff that's going on in this. Um, there's also a book called uh, New Batman. Um, there's a Robin book. There's a Nightwing book, I believe. So all of that is kind of like telling the same story over the next two months. Um, and so, of course, Dark Detective and New Batman are both on my list to check out. I like the Green Lantern as a character and a concept, so I want to see what they do with the future of that. Justice League has never really been my thing, um, but I've been talking a lot with uh, Mark of Legion of Comics lately, and he's a big DC fan, and Justice League is one of his favorite things. So, honestly, I'm probably going to read that one. If the rest of Future State is good, I will read Justice League just because I know it'll be something really fun to talk with Mark about. Robin Eternal, again, I think that name is kind of interesting. Like, why Robin Eternal? Is this supposed to be the forever Robin? Is he an android so he never dies, so he will be Robin forever? I don't know, but the name is kind of interesting. And again, the Future State Batman family stuff is all tied into the same story. It's about them searching for the next Batman, I believe, or, so, or what happened to the original Batman, Bruce Wayne. I'm not sure exactly, but um, that's why I'm kind of interested in those. And then Teen Titans is, um, you know, it's one of those like ancillary things. I think it's a cool team. I think they have a lot of interesting media and content around the Teen Titans. And so if I'm going to be trying out Future State, why not throw Teen Titans on the stack? Again, that one and Justice League are probably going to depend a lot on how much I like the stuff from week one. Um, but the rest of those I'll probably check out regardless because, again, it's kind of a revolving story. The rest of the books that are coming out this week that I'm excited for are Haha ha Number One. Um, this one's really interesting because, I don't know, I feel like part of this kind of stems back to, like, the Joker movie and um, even it, like, these, this obsession with clowns and, like, the horror of clowns and all that stuff, you know. Um, and this is, uh, 
W. Maxwell Prince. I know people really like what he's doing with Ice Cream Man, which I still need to check out. But I personally thought that King of Nowhere was a really cool story and a really great concept. And Ha Ha Number One seems like the next progression in his storytelling. So I'm interested to check this one out and see where it goes. Space Bastards Number One looks really interesting. I don't really know anything about it, but uh, the name stuck with me when I think it was uh, Brian Brian Wayne of Cheers to Comics. Um, he talked a little bit about Space Bastards or something to that effect. I saw it on the um, upcoming releases and I said, you know what, let me check that out because it sounds really cool. Homesick Pilots number two is out and this one's going to be interesting to me because I really went into the first one with no expectations. Um, I mostly read it because I knew that everybody I know is reading it and um, not so much a FOMO thing, but comic books have a sense of community and so it's always great to like be able to talk to other people about the things you're reading and so homesick pilots number one i thought i went into it with pretty much no expectations and it turned out to be really cool um and i think the whole team is just like firing on the next level like the lettering is fine it's well done it's out of the way um but the color job was incredible and i like the page layouts the art looks good, but the, the creative ways they laid out the pages, um, most specifically the page with the full house layout that was in that first issue, I thought that was really cool. So I'm in for the ride with the story and the characters. Um, I like the art. I think the layouts are creative. And I think the color job is absolutely fantastic on the first one. My only concern, I hate when series do this like high concept thing, except for their big hook for the first issue is the high concept itself. Um, so kind of spoiler alert for homesick pilots. But in the first one, you have a group of kids that are like outcasts and they're um, orphans and stuff like that. They don't really have any family. They just have their friends. And one of their friends disappear, disappears and they go into a house that they believe this friend disappeared in. And while they're in the house, there's a lot of like, crazy weird things going on and of course there's kind of an air of supernatural to it all but the big twist at the end of the first issue is that magic is real and that the supernatural stuff is real and um the person that disappeared is likely going to have control over some sort of magical power or something and this is where it concerns me going into the second and third books is a lot of times when the hook is an important element to the world and they use that as the hook for the first book, then the second, third, and all the later issues are completely different. Because in the first issue, we were watching a bunch of like punks run around and break into an abandoned house. And that's really cool and interesting and fun. Um, but I'm not really into magic. So if the rest of the series is going to be them using magic, well, that completely changes the dynamic of the series and what the first issue was kind of predicated on in the first place. And that's when series tend to lose me is like this bombastic intro with the first one. But that book is like completely nothing at all, completely different from the rest of the series because they're using the high concept as the hook. And um, so I hope that Homesick Pilots number two is just as great. Um, the characters were well done and I really got um, into the characters themselves. So I'm hoping that that can kind of be the vessel that carries me through the rest of the story. And that will be interesting to me. Um, but I mean, warning, I'm not really into magic. So if the rest of the series is going to deal a lot with magic and them having magic powers and using magic, and even if it's just like a domino luck kind of ability or something, it's probably going to wear it thin on me pretty quick. So I'm cautiously optimistic for homesick pilots number two, but I do suggest checking out the first one, if nothing else, cause it's a really cool well done story origins number three i really liked i enjoyed the first one um to a certain extent but i felt like it didn't like give me a lot at the same time it was kind of the opposite of homesick pilots where it was pretty open about what it's about from the beginning and so it started on this slow gradual build and so these are the kind of series that usually catch my attention more and then the second issue like the way that they set everything up there 
they explored a lot of like how Adam came to be and the evolution of everything. And so that was really interesting to me. And I'm excited for the third issue. I think um, the way that the second issue ended was really interesting and set up a good hook for the rest of the series. And so I'm anxiously waiting to wa to read the third one here. Big Girls number six is, um, I'm excited for it. I've really liked Big Girls. I think Jason Howard is doing something really cool. Um, it has a lot of like American concepts to it, but yet it still feels kind of like a psychological thriller in the vein of um, like Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, it's giant sized girls and they're protecting the preserve, but there's all kinds of like politics and humanity that goes into all of it. And they keep raising the stakes like in a very gradual manner. And I like that. Like each issue kind of hooks you with, um, you know, things aren't quite what they seem to be. And then the next issue, they will explore that and explain why like things aren't what they seem to be. And then they'll take and turn that on its head again at the end of the issue. So Jason Howard's doing really cool stuff. I always walk away from big girls like thinking about things, you know, and, and this is very abstract. I'm not like thinking like, oh, well, what about this? Or if big girls had went this way or what? It, but it, it makes me, it just makes me, gives me like this different perspective. So when I walk away from big girls, I'm really thinking, you know, in an abstract way, like how does the world work? What is humanity? What is life really like? Are we really supposed to save the greater and sacrifice the few or is everybody important you know a lot of things like that and to me that's what makes big girl so interesting is like the perspective the the size of the characters creates a lot of visual perspective but at the same time the storytelling itself is also creating a lot of unique perspective that leaves me thinking and so i've really enjoyed this series so far and then Mighty Morphin number three, I can pretty much guarantee that we will be talking about this on uh, Thursday night Powered Up Chat on Burt Family 54's channel. Um, if I had to guess, I would say Mighty Morphin number three, Dark Detective number one, and I don't even know what the third one would be this week, but uh, I guess we'll find out when we get to it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the full list. Mighty Morphin, I'm pretty excited for. It's like classic traditional rangers in classic traditional ranger style. Um, and that's really interesting. So I like where it's went so far. Two issues in. I'm excited to see where the third issue takes us. And, um, of course, more than likely you'll be able to get a full review of that and thoughts on it on Thursday on, uh, Burke Family 54 Comics. So, that's my list for this week. What books are you waiting on? What books are you excited to read? And um, tell me about Future State. Let me know what you thought of the first week of Future State, how many of the books you read, um, if there's anything really truly interesting to you in this universe. And um, I'll be excited to report back on what I know about Future State after these first two weeks. So until next time, keep flipping pages.